Well, hello everyone. It is Friday, October the 9th, 2020, and this is your status chat. Now, before we get into the numbers, I do want to say we are expecting some form of a storm over the weekend, I understand. Uh, there's an outdoor event that was actually moved indoor because of the expected weather. I look outside, it's a little bit gloomy, a little bit dull, don't see the sun shining, feels like there's something coming. Everyone stay safe. Now, we haven't gotten to show you what's in the box, but keep looking on the YouTube, call Dell to sell over to YouTube, one L and Dell, no spaces over to YouTube, and we'll find out what's in the box. I think it'll be worth a watch. Now, the numbers we have for today, let's look at last week's numbers, 6168, in the availables, 44, 43 in the under contracts, but still showing 72% ratio between those. All of those numbers were down previous week. This week, in the actives, we have 6211, which is slightly up, and we have 4447 in the available, still showing. That's actually up four units. Four units. We had four units more under the active under contract showing, and the ratio remained unchanged at 72%. So it's fairly stable that way. And you know what we got to do to keep, keep ourselves in good shape with the regulators? So we got to watch this. Dell Delbridge Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you're currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side, room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel, subscribe while you're there, watch the demo. Afterwards, get with me and we'll set up your exclusive account today. Thank you for sitting through that. Now, I do have something I want to show you. I'm going to look at the Middle Tennessee area. I've got a little clip I'm put in here. And this is on house pricing in the second quarter in the Middle Tennessee area. So what do you say we roll that clip? Well, hello, everyone. What do you say we look at home pricing in the second quarter for the Middle Tennessee area? And what I've pulled up for you here actually is the Metro Davidson County, Mercer, Franklin area. We see the list that's kind of in that, that geographic uh, block. And this comes from, let's go up to the top, uh, it comes from the price trend report for home sales for Tennessee, second quarter 2020. It's all of Tennessee. We, we don't have time to go into that in the status chat. So let's go down just to Middle Tennessee. We'll start with Davidson County. It is the population center. Davidson County had 1.8 billion dollars worth of transaction in that second quarter the average home price is four hundred thousand dollars we see the five-year growth at 24 percent and we see the second quarter growth was down 14 uh, percent but the five year still looks good at 24 percent okay compare that to our most affluential county that it, it happens to abut uh, davidson county and it's a little bit different story. It did over a billion dollars worth of transactions, same time frame, but it's off 16% basically. And the growth rate over a five year period is even higher than that of Davidson County, that 29%. So we're seeing more of a growth in Williamson County than we are in Davidson County. And look at that price, will you? $587,000 average price Williamson County compared to $400,000 in D Metro Davidson County. Now that, that's average, so that's going to take some of the lower areas. The east of the I-24 I corridor is, is less affluential financially than west of the I-24 corridor. But average together, Davidson County, its average price is $400,000. Now compared to Rutherford County, Another county that abuts, actually it abuts both of these, abuts Davidson County and Williamson County. And we look at how it, it performed over that same second quarter. We see it was much off, much more off in its growth over that second quarter at 47% compared to only 16% and 14% 
but it's a much more dynamic county. We see its growth, five-year growth rate, 24% compared to 30 or 24, and Davidson is very parallel with Davidson County as far as the, the price growth in Davidson and Relsford County. We do, have, we do share an interstate right through it, so that helps. But look at the price in Relsford County. The average price in Relsford County is 322. So 322 compared to 400,000 in Davidson and nearly 600 in Williamson County. So in that, in th of those three counties, Rutherford County is the more affordable county to be in. Now, how do we kind of compare to the other areas? Davidson County is a population center, so think of a raindrop hitting in the little ripple that runs out. What we should see, we should see the populations as they tend to spread. They spread from the high out to the lows, and they bump out. And this is really good for downsizing. If you live in Nashville or Williamson County that have a fairly high property value, a lot of people, when they hit retirement, may sell out, pay off their debts, move out, go to a bedroom community, a little bit of budding where they are, a few miles out, next county over, and get a more affordable home. Well, let's take a look at that in the Middle Tennessee area. Smith County, for instance, that's very close. It's out there. The average price is 137, but it's looking at a 68% growth rate. So that to me tells me that we're having a surge in Smith County. How does that compare to say Dixon County? Dixon County has a 68% five year growth rate. It's only a $200,000 home, a 203, 204. And you see it's a lower price rate. These lower prices do draw people to them. Cheatham County, 220. It sees a 66% growth rate over five years. Cannon County. Cannon County abuts Rutherford. It's on the other side of Rutherford. Davidson, Rutherford, Cannon. So maybe we're having more and more people move from these counties towards Cannon County. And the average house in, in Cheatham County is 220. Cannon County is 156. 63% for Cannon County. 66 for Cheatham. Both of these are in, a, in that next ring out, kind of away from Davidson County. Your homes get more affordable the further from Davidson County you get. That's how it works. Okay, we could, we could talk uh, generalities on these counties without ever getting to any county job-specific type of thing or economy-specific things. But in general, the further from the urban center of your area, your next urban, things get less expensive. They get more stable, less volatility. They get less dynamic and can have less growth or loss. But as we see here, Cannon, fairly rural county, 63%. Cheatham County, 66%. Dixon County, 68%. Macon County, 65% five-year growth. Trousdale, 75% growth. Now, if you can go from a $300,000 home, cash out, buy a new home at $157,000 with a growth rate of 75, and you're thinking about retiring, maybe you need to have a real estate professional work with you instead of trying to go it on your own or do the internet thing. Maybe you need to have someone with a master's in business. Anyway, that's enough for today's status chat. Appreciate you watching.